Hello everybody, it's Michelle here with Angel Souls and this is our weekly angelic message for the week beginning. What is it? It's going to be the 13th. <laughs> Sorry, I have to think about that. May 13th, 2024, but these are actually timeless. So whenever you stumble across this, it's all good. Okay, you can listen to this as well. So I am recording this and hopefully getting this uploaded on Mother's Day here in the United States. And I first want to start off by saying Happy Mother's Day. But also if you have a child who is on the other side. Your children are always with you. They're always connected to you. You don't need a special day for them to come near. Okay, I just want to remind you of that. And for those of you who may have your parent on the other side, same kind of thing. You can be connected to them at any time, especially though today if you really want to put all that focused energy into connecting with your mother you can do that. Just make sure you shield and protect yourself. If you're going to meditate and connect in that way, you don't have to go that deep with it. But if you choose to, just be careful with that. Okay. Here's the message for this week. And it's a mixed thing here. So at first, we're going to get kind of the tough stuff out of the way first. And then we're going to obviously pull some cards uh, and going to let you know where this is heading. Uh, if you have been experiencing cruelty or you have suddenly started to realize things that were there all along but you really start doing like a deeper dive on the healing and this doesn't even feel like you're making an effort to do that it's just sort of like the realizations are popping left right and center that is part of what you're hearing a lot of people talking about, which I'm so happy people are taking this seriously, but the spiritual warfare. I just am a little concerned that that's going to become a cliche. Maybe it already has. I don't know. But there's going to be a lot of challenges, not just this week. It's, you know, expanding in the past, in the future with, I don't know how to describe this, where it's like where you hoped there was love, you're getting cruelty instead or what you thought was love this is going to be a big one for a lot of you out there who are in toxic especially love partnerships for example or it might be family friends co-workers you know where you thought you could trust them and I'm not saying that there's going to be some huge betrayal it's more of this awakening that you have been being betrayed the entire time that's some of the heavy stuff hang with me here okay because it's not we're going to get you out of this okay so please just stay tuned here so this is part of your awakening process that we talk about. And remember, you're going through your individual awakening process in the backdrop of a collective energy. So whatever is going on out in the world, whatever several people are coming, you know, contributing the energy into a certain, what am I trying to say? Everyone's kind of contributing an energy that is going to affect you as well. That's what I'm trying to say. Sorry, took me a minute. So, <laughs> so what we're finding is that um, I was talking about cruelty. So people wanting to be cruel or manipulative or condescending, dismissive, um, try, you know, whatever, just, just trying it with you. And somehow you're made out to be a bad person if you stand up for yourself, if you set a boundary. And yes, that does get tricky. It absolutely gets tricky. I just think that the darkness is working overtime here because it is crumbling. It is falling down. This is going to go on for a while. Okay. This might also be a time when you realize, oh my gosh, there is a pattern between, you know, speaking to this one person and leaning on a vice like maybe you're fine until you have this interaction and then you go off and I want to be careful with what I say here maybe you eat too much or you start shopping or uh, you know uh, or <laughs> do you know what I mean again they're getting so strict with what we say here so you know what I'm saying so in a way it's very uncomfortable nobody wants cruelty coming their way obviously uh, but at the same time it's so eye-opening and here's this beautiful thing. Here's the beautiful part of it. For some of you who are in the space to do this kind of expansion, okay, um, you will realize this 
Maybe it'll upset you. Maybe you need to take a minute. But your rebound time is so swift and, and almost immediate, I want to say, that you can very quickly move on in your understanding. So here's how it's going to look. So if somebody does something or you, like for me, I've done this where I had a dream about somebody and I wake up the next day, comment down below if you've done this. We do about somebody and they do something in the dream and then you're just mad at them. Now <laughs> that becomes, that becomes a big joke, but for people like me and probably for a lot of you who are attracted to this video, you're attracted to this video because you, you have these emotions, you have these feelings, you have these ways of sensing things beyond what other people may see. Now that doesn't necessarily put you above it. Well, it doesn't put you above people, but it can make things a little difficult when you feel like you're never understood, right? And it can make you feel isolated and all those kinds of things. That's why we have communities like this one here, yes? So this could be the kind of thing, if you're in the space to do this, you have this understanding, you have this epiphany, maybe it was upsetting, but then you start to come through and you realize, I can forgive. I'm hurt by that. I have questions about why that was done, why that person felt to, the need to aim that at me. Or for some of you, maybe, you know, why did, that per, why did that boss feel the need to let me go? Or why did my love partner decide to cheat on me or to leave me? Whatever the case may be. You look at it. You experience it, you process it very quickly, and you come on through the other side. Now, this is where it gets interesting because there is no anger here. There's no bitterness. There's no resentment. And it's not the kind of forgiveness of, it's okay. I'm just going to lighten my heart and pretend like it never happened. That's not really what forgiveness is. I mean, it can be that, I suppose, if you make it that. But when we talk about forgiveness, shall I say in the spiritual sense, it is I recognize the lesson. I can be at peace with the lesson. I can see the other person's soul. I can see that they are on their timeline. I can see that maybe they are acting in kind because something happened to them. And so they, their processor is off. And so they put that at someone, at someone else. So this is not to make excuses. But it's seeing through the storyline. It's being able to see. You're not going to be able to piece it all together to be ego satisfying. That's not what this is. As a matter of fact, you'll be probably missing a lot of the details. But this is being at peace with the lesson. And still approaching everybody within that situation with love. Some people are not there. Some people, and that's not a bad thing. Oh my gosh, don't rush this, okay? That's not, everyone's on their timeline. It, you're not missing out. You're not behind everybody else. It's not a competition, okay? <laughs> like, a lot, well, all of us humans get taught that, you know, life is a big competition. It is not. This is not what we're talking about here, okay? So do you see what I'm saying? Like, where it's like, oh, that, that was like, that took a hit at my heart. That was disappointing. Why did they do that? coming on through to the other side and you may not have the answer to why they did it. You might though realize I can't change this. And then it's going to become, you might have some sadness around this. Allow yourself to be in that space if that's what is necessary. Okay. You might feel some sadness more for the fact that maybe it's someone you love and you realize that they are very sick. And they're not going to change. There might be more sadness, maybe even grieving around that. That you're never going to have that version of the person you wanted. Or you're never going to have the version of the person you thought they were. There's so going to be a lot around that. Please don't be afraid to be in your emotions. As I always say, spirituality is not a replacement for therapy. And be picky about your therapist. If you're not working out well with the therapist or it seems like someone got through the cracks, okay, be your own best advocate. Get to a good therapist, okay? Make sure you have that proper support. If you feel like you can't afford therapy, check in your region. Check, especially if you're in the United States, your county. There are resources there, okay? Just check that out. 
because in spirituality, we are often told that if you're in a low space, that you're not going to manifest or you're going to draw. And yeah, that can be true. We talked about, we've talked about that here on this channel, but that doesn't mean you don't ever allow yourself to be upset. You know, like you might don't deny your pain. It's what makes you human. It's part of why you're here. So yeah, you need to, that pain is a catalyst. So you need to sit with that sometimes. And again, if you feel like you're not in a very stable place, then make sure you're getting proper support for your mental health. Okay. So there is that. So there's a lot of growth that comes through this. Maybe some heartbreak. Again, I feel like it's more heartbreak around. I can see, I mentioned this in another video where you see somebody who maybe doesn't have empathy, they're reaching for it. It's like they're trying to fire up a part of their brain that got turned off a long time ago, maybe because of trauma. I'm not an expert in that and how that works, but um, you can see them. You see them struggling with it, and then they default to the cruelty. We should also say here, obviously, if you are in a situation, okay, Again, I got to be careful with what I say here, but a bad situation, you have resources. There are things around you, people who can come and respond to that. Okay. So make sure you're taking care of yourselves out there. The bigger bright spot is that this is freeing. It's very freeing because if you get to a place of acceptance, that's a big part of the ascension process that you've been hearing about for years and years now, right? Getting to a place of not apathy, but acceptance. That person is who they are. I will not be able to ever change them, nor should I. It is not up to me to decide who someone else should be. That is up to God and that person's soul and the, the agreement that they have between the two, right? So we shouldn't interfere with that. However, if you are somebody who's been on the receiving end of this horrible treatment, it's not that you're accepting the horrible treatment. It's that you're accepting that is who that person is. And this, having that knowledge now, being armed with that understanding, here's how I can navigate my life so that I am happier and healthier. I hope that makes sense. Leave your questions down below or share your experiences if you care to. Just please be careful in the comments. I know um, it's it, maybe it's a little freeing to just start typing and then it just starts coming out. You wanna be careful with what you're sharing on the internet, okay? So just keep that in mind. Use a journal first if you want to, or just leave a quick comment and let that be a writing prompt for you to get some of those emotions out. So this is going to be a big step, I think in a good direction with maybe a little bit of a bumpy start. Okay, well, let's get some cards. Actually, I want to clear these out. I don't think I did since the last time. So while I am doing this, let me give you a quick update. I'm wide open. Probably it should be the next two weeks for live reading sessions. Okay, uh, so live readings you can do in half hour increments. So I've had people get a half hour live readings. The half hour goes super fast. Okay. <laughs> like it's even fast to me. I look up and I'm like, Oh gosh, it's been a half hour. So if a half hour is what you can do, you can book a half hour. Just, we have to, you know, be, I guess, concise, uh, and make sure we get everything out. Uh, but I've had people schedule up to two hours to sit in one session. If you want to sit with me and you're not going to get bored <laughs> with me for two hours, it's up to you. Okay. It is up to you. So I'm wide open for scheduling those and I will start scheduling those tonight. Usually what happens as soon as I launch a video, um, sometimes it takes about an hour. Depends. I mean, it varies, but like about an hour and then people start reaching out and wanting to schedule. So just keep that in mind. Uh, courses, workshops, those kinds of things. I'm still doing that. Um, it's just that those go in hour increments. The live readings go in half hour increments. So you can do a half hour there. Uh, the courses are a minimum of an hour and we can workshop and they run pretty much the same cost as a one hour live reading. The only one that's different would be angel mediumship. That costs a little bit more because people can use that for professional purposes. You know what I mean? Okay. And it takes a little more energy 
to do that training. So yeah, you, you get the hour. We can talk about how to connect with your angels, how to work with a particular archangel, however you want to approach that. Now, sorry. So if you want any live sessions, email, email me. It's just easier. Email me at angelsouls444, angelsouls444 at gmail.com. Okay. Did we get that? Angelsouls444 at gmail.com. If you want a standard reading, I'm still having a pretty good turnaround time on those. Again, I wish I had a better way of doing this, but I never know how many people are going to come in or how many people are going to get in ahead of you. Maybe nobody does. Like, and, and you're just like the next one up. So not too much of a wait time on those. You can book those at angelsouls444.com. Thank you. Thank you for hanging in there with me. <laughs> it's a lot to say every week. All right, let's see. What's, what's the good news? What's the good news? Tell me. <laughs> Gratitude. Interesting that we're starting out with that after that big long message about the cruelty. And it's a weird time. I'm not going to lie to you because it's one of those things where you might in your head go, how in the world would I be grateful for poor treatment? Why in the world would I be grateful that I got dumped? <laughs> All right. Oh, I got a, I got a gratitude story. Um, I was engaged. The guy was horrible. Um, he was psychologically, okay, um, and it got physical too. I'm not going to lie to you. It did. Uh, he was awful. And um, then he cheated and I snapped out of my stupor and was like, this is a no. Uh, let's cancel the wedding. So there were consequences for that. <laughs> I canceled the wedding. It's probably the strongest thing I've ever done in my life. That would be a situation where it was awful. It was a dark night of the soul kind of moment. Nobody wants to go through that. But I, I had a lot of gratitude that it happened because, oh my gosh, if I, ah, if I had stayed with that person, it would have only gotten worse. He wanted to use me as a baby factory. <laughs> like it was, yeah, it was a lot. So here we go. Crucifixion. This is what some of you are going to be feeling like this week. Do you see what I'm saying? But the it's a weird mix here. I don't know how else to explain it. It's like all these things are going on and it breaks your heart. It hurts. You might be then less motivated to go do the things that you love. You might be feeling like you're getting hit kind of hard. Okay. Um, and, and being hit unnecessarily. Let's get more on that. But yet it's like, I'm glad I know that. Okay. That person just said that out loud. I'm glad I know that. This getting offended easily culture, there, there's, there's a problem with it in that if you want to silence people, you don't know where they stand. Now, it's terrible to hear these things. We don't want to encourage that, you know, bad behavior. But if you're like, don't say things because it offends me and then people just hold it in and then you find out another way how they feel. It's better to give them some space to blah, put it all out there so you know what to do with it next, okay? Like, wouldn't you rather know that someone's not on the up and up? You know what I mean? Here's your good news. Oh, wait. Oh, I just put that right up in the lamp so you couldn't see none. Here you go. It says love. Guess what kind of love that is? It's divine love. I feel like this is love. They're saying from the team. So that would be your spiritual team, but also what we call soulmates. But like your soul team here on earth that they have uh, incarnated with you. Okay. So this tells me that this might be a tough time. Here's what it is. Th imagine this being a week of like the Saturn return. Okay. Whatever's not working. I don't care what age you are. Saturn return happens. What guys help me out. 28 and a half to 30, I think. <laughs> Correct me in the comments. And then I think it's like, what, 59 and a half to 60 some years old? I don't know. But whatever's not working in your life comes crashing down. That's when that um, relationship thing happened to me. And I said, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, look at that. I heard all the astrologers talking about it. <laughs> Here we go. My life was a mess because I was going down the wrong path. Absolutely going down the wrong path. And I got going in a far better direction. So 
want you to know that. Um, but there's just all this love coming through and it's like clearing away all the stuff that doesn't serve you so that there's room for the good friends who aren't just shallow, vapid, judgmental, snobby, whatever, pretentious, you know, like people who just, ugh, like they collect people like, like they're objects. So they feel more popular. Like, do any of you feel like you're a filler person? Meaning you don't get the invite unless an entourage is required wherever you're going. Yeah. So, <laughs> so this is clearing that stuff away. So there's room for real love and real support. This is good. This is good. We like it. The resurrection. Okay. That's a little weird. <laughs> That's a little weird. Okay, let me let me go back. I'm knocking things around. We're we're fine. Wow, you got these two. Something has to go away. Something has to end because it's not for you. It needs to go in a far different direction, but it's a good direction. It gets you in touch with love, like a true sense of love. But maybe you never even imagined. Okay. Let's get a card out of this deck. I got behind on comments. Um, someone I think was asking what this deck is. This is the, and thank you, Steve. I, Steven, I think you were the one who answered him. Again, I was like scrolling through really quick. So thank you, if I remember that. This is the Mary Magdalene Oracle by Tony Carmine Salerno. I, do I have, I mean, I have these linked. I don't know. And then this one, I don't remember what this one's called, but it's Colette Baron Reed. Okay, that I know. Love her. She comes up with these fun decks. All right, let's get another one here. Ooh, really? <laughs> Hold on, I dropped half the deck. I was in the zone, okay? I was being mystical. It fell in a bag. Hold on. Okay. Well, if you are new here, this happens. Often I'm crawling around on the floor trying to figure out what's happening. All right, so the ones that flung out and flew everywhere and made me work for it. We have... Why am I out of breath crawling on the floor? Oh, no. <laughs> like, we got to work on that. First, we have 12. I am recording this on the 12th. I don't know, that just kind of hit me. And 12 is the number of completion after you have all the information. Okay, so completion starts in angel numbers with the number nine. That's when you're having your realizations. 10 is where usually the heartbreak happens. That's why for the 1010 energy portal, a lot of people flood in for readings because they want to know what's coming and get prepared for what's physically going to leave their life, right? 11 is manifesting, figuring out what you want and bringing it into reality. And then 12 is sort of solidifying that. So this is slow and steady. So this is telling me slow and steady on the process of all of that. Okay, it will happen. But if you try to jump to the conclusion, it's not going to work out well. I want to say this too, because someone who has gotten away with really poor treatment for a very long time. The darkness and people who have darkness working through them, they are gonna writhe and scream, gnashing of teeth. Oh, I went there, I went biblical, okay? <laughs> Nash, gnashing of teeth with a GN, okay? That's gonna happen. And they're gonna try to make you feel guilty for taking care of yourself. That's what, I keep calling it darkness, but there's a word for that. You know what it is? That's how they function, okay? Now, very interestingly enough, I ran across someone today who very openly said that they work with darkness. And they were like, kind of proud of themselves. And like, this is what I've been doing. And it was more disturbing because this person was solid. And I felt like this person was good at what they do. Like, darn good at what they do. They used to hide in the shadows. 
and kind of be underground, you know, and that was sort of like the covertness of it all was scary to people. And now they're coming right out in your face. They're right out in your face. So I just felt the need to say that. So those people that maybe, maybe you do lose friends. They were awful. Don't chase them. Don't feel guilty. Come to the light. <laughs> Come to the light, honey. Because they, the angels and archangels are working diligently with us to cut those ties, to let those people go because they're siphoning off of good people. So then we have the number uh, 27 here reduces in angel numbers. It reduces to nine. Somebody tries to do like the mathematical reducing. That's not what we're talking about here. Okay. And the card is home. Now what jumps out? Hopefully I can get all this focus. I don't know. This is very intricate, this card. And there, if you guys don't know, there's a little owl back here. He's hiding out and saying hello. <laughs> like back there. This just feels like all the intricate workings of a dynamic, of energy flow between people. All of that is coming to light. It's like taking the cover off of a very intricate, complicated machine. And now you see all the wires and you see the buttons and you see, maybe you even see a current. Like it starts to flash as it goes through. That's kind of what's going on this week. Now, the word on here is home. You might be reevaluating what home means to you. You might be realizing there's a clock on here too. I, you're not going to be able to see it. It's so small. There's all kinds of little Easter eggs in here. There's a fairy. You're not going to see it, but there's a fairy over here and a clock here. You're just going to take my word for it. <laughs> so again, I don't think you're going to see it. But there's this idea here of I always thought home was with these people under these circumstances in this place. And now you're realizing home is within me. In some of the toughest situations where someone had control over me because they assumed I would be afraid to be alone. And you know what? It's painful sometimes. It is. It does. I've traveled alone. If, if you're going to do that, please be careful. But I've traveled alone. And for the most part, it was awesome. You make friends everywhere you go. Okay. But this is when I went to Maui years ago. And it's like the honeymoon island. It was always around dinner time that I started to get a little sad because I didn't have anybody to have like a romantic dinner with. There, That feeling might be coming up here a little bit. Um, but in also that moment, you know, there was that, but also there have been times where people have tried to do a power struggle with me. If you do not do, as I say, you will not be invited or we will not be your friends or we will not include you or we will not allow you to do X, Y, and Z. The moment I realized I can always be my own best friend, I have a strong connection to God. I have you know, a strong connection to the spiritual realm. I have a strong connection with angels and archangels of light. Who's going to, who's going to intimidate me with loneliness, right? Like who's going to threaten me with loneliness? It's not happening. Okay. I'm always at home within myself. Now, when we come to this space and, and think of it more as like a landing place, it's not permanent. I'm not encouraging you to never interact with other human beings ever again, but if someone is trying to manipulate you, um, again, threatening to take away special times, you know, if you don't go along with what they say, you can always lean on yourself. You can be your own source of love. You can be your own comfort, your own support. If that means you write in a journal, all your feelings, write in a journal. Again, if you want to get a therapist, get with a good therapist. I know people who uh, look in the mirror and they talk in the mirror. That freaks me out. Um, you do you? I don't know. It's weird. I can't. I can't. To me, it's weird. I, I can't do that. But something I will do, and maybe this sounds crazy to some of you out there, I will ask, especially if I'm hurting, guardian angels to come in and help me. 
or usually it's Gabriel who comes in to nurture. And I encourage you to work with Archangel Gabriel as well to help you feel nurtured, to help some of that um, pain ease up. And Archangel Raphael, obviously for the healing, but for also for also, also for compassion and and growing that compassion. But there have been times that I'll have, you know, I'll not even necessarily in meditation, but just sort of being still. And I will, in my mind, invite these angels forward. And I will, you can do this any way you want, but I'll lay all the burdens down. And I'll say, what do you advise? Is there something I can handle on my own? Or do I turn this to God? Now, when someone's being cruel and manipulative, and no matter what you say or do, they're never going to change, that's one for God. Turn it over to God. And you can do that through the angels if you don't feel like some people really feel like they have to use the middlemen <laughs> right, to, to get to God, whatever you're comfortable with. You know, angels are here to help us, guide us, protect us. And especially in the case of Archangel Sandalfin, he is thought to take our prayers and our requests to God, right? And to kind of advocate for us if it is deserved, right? So it's an intricate, complex time. And please know time is not linear, especially with the angels, but it's not a linear time frame outside of this construct. Okay. So it, it, this message will go on. Okay. It's not just this week, but it will start now. Okay. Again, leave your comments down below. If you want to work with me for a live session or like course workshop, Email me at angelsouls444 at gmail.com. If you want to get your standard reading and you get in pretty quickly, it should be a quick turnaround. If a bunch of people get in ahead of you, well, then that's going to change a little bit, but it shouldn't be too drastic. Those readings you get at angelsouls444.com. We're going to leave it there. I'm sending you all so much love and take care.